look at him, he's heading for that small moon. That's no moon. New Hope, the first one made. It's a very bad feeling about this. It's really not a good movie. And it's really not that good. My sons are major into Star Wars now. I don't know how it happened. I tried to shield them from the fate of becoming a Star Wars fan, but against my wishes, they become obsessed with Star Wars. It's like something, it's like almost something evolutionary, something clicked in their minds, and all of a sudden they're running around the house with lightsabers. Let me see what you have. No! Side note to the side note, on Friday, my, my son says to me, he says, Daddy, I wanna, be a, I wanna be a Jedi when I grow up. And I said, oh, you know, me too. You know, I might not be a big Star Wars fan, but I, I'd love to be a Jedi. And he said, but you're already grown up, and you're not a Jedi. And I said, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Daddy, you failed. Yes, I did. In so many ways, son. In so many ways. Kids always know how to lift your spirits like that. But anyway, um, so I watched the, the movie, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm at the age of 33 now, and I'm, I'm just now getting acquainted with the Star Wars universe. So I have only two questions I wanted to throw out there. Always do there are. No more, no less. First of all, and this was bugging me the whole time I'm watching the movie, are people drawn to the dark side because they want to wear the cool helmets and masks? I've noticed a real deficiency with the good guys when it comes to cool helmets and masks. Why is it that only the bad guys wear them? And they wear them when they don't need to. You've got like stormtroopers walking around the ship you know, on friendly territory, and there's apparently the, the ship's oxygenated, so they could take the helmet off, but they're you know, they're in the break room having some coffee and they got the helmet still on. So, um, but, and I get it because it looks cool. It just, it's a cool look. And I'm, my thing is, the good guys, they could probably, I mean, the, the Kylo, uh, you know, uh, Kylo Ren, right? The whole reason he went to the dark side is honestly just that he, he wanted to wear a cool helmet and he wanted to look like Darth Vader. That's the whole reason, this is the only reason he became a bad guy. I think the good guys could really stop that from happening and kind of stop the bleeding, as it were, losing all these Jedis to the dark side. If, if someone just ran to Party City and grabbed some costumes, and then they could say to somebody like Kylo Ren, no, 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 look, we got costumes too, you know? You want your own costume? You want to design something? That's fine. We've got people that can make costumes. And Kylo Ren is a punk And then my second question, and this, this really, this, this bugs me the most, and this honestly might be one of the main reasons I never got into Star Wars. You're in a galaxy with extraordinarily advanced technology. We're talking so advanced that just your average commuter ships can go the speed of light. <laughs> That's the kind of technology you have. On top of that, you got robots that, have, that can pass the Turing test. They're conscious. C-3PO appears to be conscious, right? He has thoughts and feelings. Goodness gracious me. Really advanced technology. And yet you're using swords. I mean, a lightsaber is a glorified sword. It's a laser sword. An elegant weapon but a more civilized day. All of this technology and you're using a sword to fight people. You're telling me you couldn't come up with a weapon that would make that sword irrelevant? And if a guy comes at you with a laser sword, you could just shoot him, right? And that'd be the end of it. Now I know you're gonna say, oh, well they could block the, you, well you see in the movie, they block the lasers with their sword. Yeah, that's because the laser guns, the lasers that come out of the lasers and the laser guns are super slow. You see how slow those lasers are? They, they go at the speed of a Nerf bullet. And that's why they're so easy to block, and everyone gets on the stormtroopers' case when they say, the joke is the stormtroopers can't hit anybody, and uh, they got the worst aim in the galaxy. But the reason is that the lasers are going so slow, so they're easy to dodge. So why not make a gun with a laser that goes the speed of an actual laser? He's too dangerous to be left alive. And in lieu of that, just get a regular gun, like a, a sawed-off shotgun, and you could kill every Jedi in the galaxy, no problem. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! You underestimate my power. It just doesn't make any sense. And it bothers me. You know what company's looking out for you when they actually upgrade your service and they don't charge you for it? Pure Talk just added data to every new and existing plan. They're also including a mobile hotspot with each new plan as well with no price increase whatsoever. If you've considered Pure Talk before but you haven't made the switch, you need to take a look again. For just $20 a month, you'll get unlimited talk, text, and now 50% more 5G data plus a mobile hotspot. I love Pure Talk. Not only do they offer great services, but they also happen to be veteran-owned and they only hire the best 
United States-based customer service team available. Remember, you vote with how you spend your money, so stop supporting woke wireless companies that don't support you. When you go to puretalk.com slash Walsh, you'll save an additional 50% off your first month because they actually value you. That's puretalk.com slash Walsh. Pure Talk, wireless for Americans by Americans. The reviews for this new Star Wars movie have come out, and right now, last I checked on Rotten Tomatoes, I think it's got like a 58%, which is bad, rotten, according to Rotten Tomatoes. And so it's just it's just being abysmally rated. I think it's going to end up being perhaps the worst rated, re- reviewed uh, Star Wars movie yet, and even even worse than Phantom Menace, which was, a, which was an abomination in so many ways, as most people know. Say something about the mother... There's only so much story to be told. So this is what the ninth Star Wars movie, and it's not even count. I'm not even counting all the other peripheral things and the offshoots and the you know, other uh, uh, spin-offs and, and, and the TV shows. So there's even more than that. But just in the in the primary film franchise, we're now on the right ninth movie, right? And if they're each about two hours long on average, let's say, I'm talking about 18 hours. 18 hours. Is there really 18 hours worth of story to be told based on this? I'm telling you, if you watch that first Star Wars movie, New Hope, it is really not a good movie. How dare you? It honestly isn't. It, if you go in, if you go in cold, it's really not that good. Dude, Matt straight up sucks. The acting is bad. It's uh, Mark Hamill is not a good actor. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. The script is not good. The dialogue is clunky and, and everything. I mean, it's it's kind of campy and kind of fun, I guess, but it's not. My point is it's really not a great film. And then you have to look at that and ask yourself, is there 18 hours worth of material to be mined from that? Even a really, really great film which with 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 the, that is complex and dense and with great characters and and everything you're probably not going to find 18 hours worth of material from it but the first star wars movie isn't even that great and it just goes on and on and on each new star wars movie it just repeats just over and over gets the same story repeated over and over and over and over and over again how many times do we have to see the same story while the star wars universe i don't think has enough in it to justify 18 hours of story, the actual universe does. What I mean is, if you want to make a movie, a, a sci-fi movie about things happening in space, where it involves aliens and spaceships and adventures, I say, great, do that. There's, there's literally endless possibilities for telling stories set in space. But all of our, you know, all, all the resources in Hollywood and everything is focused on, well, if we're gonna tell a space story, it has to be Star Wars. It's like, just, can we get away from the Star Wars thing? And if we if we have filmmakers and and and, and scriptwriters and actors who uh, want to you know be in a do a movie about space, just let them do that. We just it doesn't need to be Star Wars. Can we just put that aside? Fine, we've done Star Wars. We get it. People are just itching. I gotta go. I gotta go see it again. Did I wait four days in the rain, peeing into my own hand and drinking it to get Phantom Menace tickets for the third time? Yes. I've seen this same movie eight times already, and now I gotta go. I gotta go on opening weekend to watch it again one more time. I gotta, I'm just gonna I'm gonna hand my money over to Disney. Here's some money. Go see a Star Wars. They have no respect for me as a as a as a fan as a viewer because they're just they're just they're just shoving tripe into my mouth. Just garbage. They're not even trying to make an original story. It's just reheated it's leftovers, and you go and you give them their money, and they literally shovel it into your mouth. I mean, who would do that? This is what we do with Hollywood. I don't understand it.